Hey, 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 he, 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 it's time for Junie B. Hi, guys. Okay, ready? It's the new book. So, this is one of my favorite books. This book is called Junie B. Jones Has a Monster Under Her Bed. So, before I read it, I just want to talk to you for a minute. We know that monsters are not real. We all know that. I know it. You guys know it. But Junie B is not so sure. Okay? So, here we go. Chapter 1 is called The Cheese Man. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Let's read and find out. So, here comes my voice. My name is Junie B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. I just like B, and that's all. I am in the grade of kindergarten. Today, we got school pictures taken at that place. School pictures is when you wear your bestest dress, and you go to the cafeteria, and a cheese man is there. He makes you say, cheese. Only I don't actually know why he makes you say that. Okay, guys, there's already a picture. So we've got Judy B. Jones in her bestest dress, and there's the cheese man, who's actually the photographer taking her picture. And then the cheese man takes pictures of you, and your mommy has to buy them or else you will get your feelings hurt. School pictures is a racket, I think. I wore my new dress with a dinosaur on the front. A dinosaur, huh? said the cheese man. I smoothed my skirt very lovely. Yes, I said. It is a Tyrannosaurus Dottie. You mean a Tyrannosaurus Rex, he said. No, I mean a Tyrannosaurus Dottie. Because Rex is the boy and Dottie is the girl, I said. Cheese Man stood behind his camera. Say cheese, he said to me. Yeah, only guess what? I, I don't actually know why I have to say that word, because what's cheese got to do with it, I asked. Well, cheese makes you smile, said the Cheese Man. I shook my head. Not me. Cheese doesn't make me smile, I said, because sometimes I eat cheese sandwiches for lunch, and I don't even giggle when I swallow that thing. The Cheese Man did a big breath. Could you just please say it, he asked. Yes, I said. I can just please say it. Only, don't forget to tell me when you're ready, because one time my grandpa Frank Miller was taking my picture and he didn't tell me he was ready. And then one of my eyes turned out open and one of my eyes turned out closed. And that wasn't a very good face. So, you see? Do you see my eyes? See how one of them is going to be opened and one of them is going to be closed? It's just not cute, I tell you. All of a sudden, the cheese man took my picture. My mouth came wide open at him. Hey, how come you did that? How come you took my picture because I wasn't even ready yet? And the cheese man just kept on clicking and clicking his camera. And pretty soon, he looked at the next person in line. Next, he said. I stamped my foot. Yeah, only I wasn't ready, I tell you, and so I need another turn, I said. And just then my teacher came over and she pulled me away from there. And she sat me down on the bench right next to her. My teacher's name is Mrs. She has another name too, but I just like Mrs. And that's all. Mrs. said, settle down to me. And then me and her watched the rest of the children get their pictures taken. My bestest friend, named Lucille, went next. She had on a blue satin ribbon in her hair. My Nana says this ribbon brings out the blue in my eyes, she told the cheese man. And she opened her eyes real big. Do you see them? Do you see their color? They are robin's egg blue, with just a hint of lavender. The cheese man sucked in his cheeks. He 
was getting frustration in him, I think. Could you please just say cheese, he said. So Lucille smiled real big with all of her teeth. Cheese, she sang. Cheese, cheese, cheese. And then she kept on singing cheese until the cheese man said, knock it off. After she was done, Lucille skipped over to me and Mrs. Did you see me? She asked. Did you see how good I say cheese? That's because I'm going to be a model when I grow up, so I already know how. And then she fluffed her fluffy hair. The camera is my friend, she said. Mrs. rolled her eyes way up at the ceiling. I looked up at the ceiling too, but I didn't see anything. All right, so here's a picture of Lucille all dressed up, and Junie, and there's Mrs. After that, it was time for the whole class picture. The whole class picture is when all of room nine lines up in two rows. The biggie kids stand in the back row, and the shorty kids stand in the front row. I am a shorty kid. Only that is nothing to be ashamed of. I stood right next to Polly Allen Puffer. He looked very admiring at my dinosaur dress. Dinosaurs bite people's heads off, he said. Yeah, only they don't even scare me, because there's no such thing as dinosaurs anymore, I told him. So, there's still such things as monsters that can bite your head off said Polly Allen Puffer. A monster lives right under your bed, I bet. My big brother says that everybody has a monster under their bed. And then he poked his finger at me. Even you, Junie B. Jones, he said. I got some shivers on my arms. No, I, I do not, Polly Allen Puffer, I said. Yeah, you do too, he said. My brother's in seventh grade. And he says that the monster waits until you go to sleep, and then he crawls up next to you, and then he lies down on your pillow, and he practices fitting your whole head right into his mouth. I covered up my ears, but Polly Allen Puffer just kept talking louder. I can even prove it, he said. Didn't you wake up once in a while, and there was a drool spot on your pillow? I thought, and I thought very hard, yeah, so? So where do you think it came from, he asked. It came from the monster. Under your bed. That's where it came from. It was monster. Drool, Junie B. Jones. No, no, it was not Polly Allen, Papa. You stop saying that and I mean it. Then he raised up his eyebrows. Well, where do you think it came from? You don't drool on your pillow, do you? You're not a baby, are you, he said. No, no, don't don't call me that. I'm not a baby, I yelled. And then Polly Allen Puffer crossed his arm. So where did the drool come from then, he asked me again. I, I don't know, I said, but my daddy told me there's no such thing as monsters. Well, so what? Daddies have to say that, said Polly Allen Puffer. That's so you'll go to sleep at night and not bother them. And then he squinted his eyes at me. Why do you think daddies and mommies sleep together in the same room anyways? It's so they can protect each other from the monster, or else their heads might get chewed off. Just then I wrinkled up my nose at that terrible thought, and then I hanged out my tongue and I did a sicky face. And guess what? Oh no, the cheese man took my picture again! Okay, that's the end of chapter one. Chapter two is called... Just say right. After school pictures, we went back to room nine, and I put my head down on my table. There's no such thing as monsters. There's no such thing as monsters, I whispered to just myself, because my very own daddy told me that, and he wouldn't even lie to me. I don't think. Mrs. said for me to sit up in my chair, and she passed out work for us to do. It was called printing our letters, only I didn't actually feel like doing that. So I tapped on my bestest friend named Lucille. 
Guess what, Lucille? There's no such thing as monsters. There's really, really not. And so a monster doesn't live under my bed probably, right, Lucille? Right? Right? Shh, Lucille said to me. I'm doing my letters. Yeah, Lucille, I, I know you're doing your letters, only I just wanted to tell you about the monster because he's not even real, right? Lucille did not say right. How come you're not saying right, Lucille? Just please say right, okay? Just say monsters aren't real, and then I won't bother you anymore. All of a sudden, Lucille did a mad breath at me. Oh, now look what you made me do, Junie B. You made me ruin my capital G. I told you not to bother me. She quickly grabbed her paper and she went over to Mrs. so Mrs. could fix it. I tapped my fingers on the table and then I turned around and looked behind me. And then I smiled at a boy named Crybaby William. Mm. Guess what, William? There's no such thing as monsters. And so a monster doesn't even live under my bed probably, right, William? Right? But William moved his seat away from me. So I followed him in my chair. I'm right. Don't you think I'm right, William? A monster really doesn't live under my bed, does he? Plus also he doesn't put my head in his mouth. And then William slided his chair way farther away from me. So I just kept scooting right after him. Just say right, okay, William? Just say that there's not a monster under my bed and I will be on my way. And then William picked up his chair and he carried his chair all the way to the middle of the classroom. Okay, here's a picture. So this is crybaby William and Junie following in her chair. So Junie's trying to get her friends to say that there's no such thing as monsters that live under your bed. Hmm, that's how come I had to carry my chair over to the middle of the floor too. I sat down and smiled very sweet. Right, William? I'm right, aren't I? Only too bad for me, because just then I felt some hands on my shoulders. I looked up. It was Mrs. I did a gulp. Hello, how are you today? I said, kind of nervous. Mrs. zoomed my chair right back over to my table. It was not fun. I quickly picked up my pencil. I'm like, guess what? I'm doing my work now, I said. Plus also, I am not going to talk anymore because I don't actually like, I don't like this idea of talking right now. Mrs. tapped her foot at me. I looked at Mrs.'s feet. I love your shoes, I said real soft, but her foot kept tapping at me. Only just then a very great thing happened, and it is called the bell rang for the end of school. I hurried up right out the door, and then me and my other bestest friend named Grace run to the bus together. Grace, 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 guess what? There's no such thing as monsters, and so I don't even have one under my bed probably. Right, Grace? Right? That Grace didn't say right. That's how come I grabbed her by her shoulders and I jiggled her and I jiggled her because I was fed up with these people, that's why. How come you won't say right, Grace? How come nobody will say right because I'm getting at the end of my rope with this thing? That Grace took my hands off of her shoulders. I can't say right, Junie, because the monster really might live under your bed. My eyes got big and wide at her. No, Grace, no, don't say that. Do not say a monster might live under my bed because that cannot be true or else I would have spotted that guy by now. No, you wouldn't, she said. My big sister says the monsters can turn themselves invisible. So you can't see them. That Grace looked very serious at me. That makes sense, don't you think, Junie? It makes sense. Just then my throat got dry and my stomach got the shakies and I looked out the window of the bus very upset and I didn't say right either. Okay, guys.
I'm going to stop there. So the next time I see you, we are going to read chapter 3, which is called The Invisibliest Guy. So I have a bad feeling Junie's going to go home and look under that bed. So I love you. I miss you all so much. I hope you got to go outside today because it's so beautiful and sunny. And I will see you next time.